This is Marcus Corval with MMA Nuts, and we're here for another episode with our podcast. And we got the lovely Daria Bernardo in the house, and Chris Osciagos is back. And uh, we uh, have to say uh, congratulations first Thank and you. foremost Thank you to, so much. to that contract that you've been wanting for a long time. Uh-huh. You're a different man now. I know it's like I feel the same, <laughs> but uh, everyone everyone looks at me differently. Yeah, I called him to see if he can come on the show. He goes, "Contact my manager, please." <laughs> <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> So it might happen in the future. I, I, I think so. I think so. Um, but now, I think a lot of people don't realize, you know, how did you get into the UFC and what's the process? What goes on? So from – you knew there was a good chance you were getting on the show, even from before you fought uh, for the title for yeah. RFA. Mm-hmm. Um, but talk us through the process. From that moment till the UFC contacted, what happened? Um, I mean, after I won the RFA title – I um you know I, I was hoping for the call. My manager was telling me it's pretty sure like it's gonna happen. So uh, I've been just waiting, waiting, and then after like two weeks, it hasn't happened yet. I started to doubt. Like, damn, did I not do enough yet? Are they not gonna give me a shot? I was just hoping I didn't get a call from Jason saying, "Hey, we're gonna book you for the Titan Championship next." You know, what I mean, to get the Titan belt. <laughs> Cause uh, I mean, he hit up Joe Silva, and he was like. Well, I mean, you know, he got the Tachi belt. He got the RFA belt. What else do you want? You want to get the Titan belt? So he ended up calling me. You know, he was like, do you have a passport? And uh, right when he said that, I already knew. I didn't know where I was going yet. Do you have a passport? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like waiting to see what's happening. And he was like, you're going to Rio October 25th. And then I was like, woo. I was just like, I got so excited. So cool. Your yeah. first fight in the UFC. You get to go to some... Have you ever been to Brazil? No, no, never that been That is to Brazil. so cool. Are you excited to go? Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, nervous too, you know, because uh, I'm fighting a Brazilian and a well-known Brazilian at that. You know, he's Vitor Barfor's uh, jiu-jitsu coach. You know, Vitor brought him on the show in the Ultimate Fighter in Brazil. So, you know, I'm expecting to get booed, you know. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I was expecting to get booed in my last fight. And, uh, you know, it, it, it feels good knowing you're the underdog, you know, so... I got nothing to lose. Just go out there and fight, and yeah. uh, I'm gonna give the UFC a good show. Now you find a guy that you said is is already pretty well known in Brazil. He's eight and zero. He was on the Ultimate Fighter in Brazil. So not only is he known in the mixed martial arts world, the the casual viewer of mixed martial arts knows who he is from from watching the show. And everyone said it like you have never watched mixed martial arts and heard mixed martial arts until you've been to Brazil. They said that commentators down there are having difficulty just hearing each other because it's so loud. It's like, a, you know, when you watch football or soccer, as you Americans call it, <laughs> uh, it's it's just chaos. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Do you think about it? Um, you know, I mean, I haven't been there yet, so I don't know exactly how loud it's going to be. I, I think I've heard pretty loud, and uh, it never really let it get to me. You know, once I'm in the cage... I'm focused on the fight. Um, the crowd doesn't really bother me. I I, I kind of tune that out pretty well. So, um, I think something that's important to point out is that six of your twelve fights in pro have been title shots. Yeah, yeah, it's, um, exactly. Six. Yeah, of. yeah, half my fights have been uh, title fights. Uh, knowing you're gonna go five five minute rounds, it kind of messes with your head a little bit. I, I, I'm uh, pretty excited that I'm going back to um, you know three minute round. I mean, not three minute rounds. Uh, three five minute rounds. So. Um, my cardio is gonna be good. I'm not worried about it. I did uh three rounds today and I barely got tired, so pretty excited about that. We well, only four, what two weeks ago, three weeks ago, no two weeks ago. Uh, like two and a half weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And that was you were ready for a five five round war for that yeah, one. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Now tell us a little bit about your opponent. Um, fighting Gilbert Burns. He is a jujitsu a jujitsu practitioner. He's won like three world titles. No gi. Um, Guy, he actually beat Crone Gracie, um, so not trying to go to the ground with him. Uh, I don't think his wrestling's all there, so to take me down, I think he's going to have trouble. Dakota was a really experienced wrestler, and he had a hard time taking me down, so I think I'll be okay to keep it standing, you know. Um, I'll be working a lot on my ground, though, for sure, you know, getting back to my feet, but I definitely want to keep it standing. Uh, He's a good striker. Uh, I saw his last fight in the UFC. He won, and he basically struck the whole match. Um, he looks technical. He looks strong. I just feel like my scrambles and uh, you know my athleticism is going to make the difference. And uh, I'm just going to go out and try to knock him out. He actually fought with Swede and Andrea Stoll. Oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. The wrestler. His first you know? fight yeah. in the UFC, right? Yeah, and uh, he broke his nose and he broke uh, his orbital bone, I think, as well. But a lot of people felt... 
that Andreas won that fight. Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah, it was I, a controversial I, decision. Yeah, yeah, you know, it is what it is. Um, to me, he won, and I'm gonna go out there and. Uh, do you think he won that fight? Did you watch it? Yeah, you, I you watched watch it. it. I know you watched it because I watched yeah, it with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think uh, the 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 thing that made the difference of the round that was so close was the second round when um right. when he got him mount for like you know two three seconds yeah. or no he was going to mount he like took him back he took him down and he was like transitioning the mount and i think they scored a takedown and uh i think that made the difference but um i think uh the other guy was it andreas yes he uh i think he was putting the pressure on him and i felt like uh um gilbert thought it was like tied one round to one round from that and uh, came out in the third round he came out hard in the third round you know what i mean so um it could have went either way it was a good fight either way and um you know the striking looked good. I, I was I was impressed, you know, for a jiu-jitsu guy to have striking like that. So, um, but I mean, I, I feel like my striking is a little bit better. So I'm yours, gonna, I was gonna say yours is very good. <laughs> so yeah. I'm gonna just go out, you know, and uh, you know, bang. But just watch uh, getting too close and committing too much to get taken down. You had some good like sprawl and brawl in your last fight because the guy was such a wrestler and he had a hard time taking you down. Yeah, he he ended up getting desperate, and um, right. when they get desperate, it's a lot easier to defend. So right, is that your kind of same game plan there? If he goes for the takedown. Sprawl, brawl, get back to your feet. Um, exactly. Um, I have the exact game, um, exact game plan for this fight than my last fight. So it's, okay. Uh, except in my last fight, my game plan was to wear him down the first round and pin him up against the cage. Uh, probably won't do that. Just probably strictly try to strike. You know, keep okay. my distance. I get to work in a bigger cage in the UFC. Oh, um, that's right. So I get to lo- a lot more movement. Just I'll try to s- big. yeah, try to stay away from the cage and uh, keep it in the middle as much as possible. So he won a decision that some some feel was controversial and could have gone either way. Now, do you feel that it'd be hard to win a decision if it's a close fight in Brazil since you're fighting a Brazilian? I'm definitely not gonna try to take it to the judge's scorecard. Um, I I know I'm in Brazil on his turf. They want the Brazilians to win. You know, um, that's how they make their money. They uh, by wanting. Brazilians, they spend money. They go to the fights. You know, they sell out. Yeah. You know, Jose Aldo's fighting on that card. So yeah. um, I think I'm either the main event of the prelims or possibly the, the first card or the main card. Not too sure. She might be on the main card. Uh, your first fight. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Just I mean, I think it's because of his name, but, you know. Um, hey, take it where you can get it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, you know. Um, but, um, yeah, I definitely don't want it to be close. Uh, if I feel like it's already close going to the third round, you know, I'm going to go out there and try to really knock him out, you know, so. <laughs> and fighting on the undercard for for jo- Jose Aldo, Jose Aldo, and um, Chad, Mendes. Uh, Chad Mendes. Mendes, who's you know fighting now finally uh, again. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's been some some heated exchanges exchanges between the two of them. Um, does it? Uh, you're gonna be somewhat starstruck to fight under Jose Aldo, who's such a big name. And, and who do you think will win that fight? I want Chad Mendes to win. Um, I like. I'm a Chad Mendes fan, and. Um, uh, it sucks about the first fight, you know, because uh, Chad Mendes was trying to take him down, and you know Jose kind of grabbed the fence, which kind of caused him not to get taken down, which caused the knee. So um, I really want to see Chad Mendes be able to work a little bit, and um, you know I just like him as a fighter. I like Jose too. I think he is definitely one of the best fighters in the world, but uh, I like going for the underdogs, especially being an underdog in most of my fights. So and now Alpha Male and TJ Bellis. Uh, Dillashaw fighting and beating uh, Barrao uh, and this is kind of you know Brazil versus Alpha Male again right. in Chad Mendes versus oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jose point. Aldo do you think it's do you think Brazilians feel that this is a little bit more personal and they seem like they made it a little bit more personal as well with the, with the bit of shoving competitions and heated words between the two of them it could be it, it, yeah, and know. then you have a Cal- another Cal- Cali boy coming there yeah. to beat a Brazilian. Yeah, and I don't, know, I don't know what's up with Brazilians. They like to cut a lot of weight. <laughs> 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 uh, um, um, my opponent actually had trouble making fifty fives before. Oh boy! So um, it's for one seventy, right? Yeah, most of his fights yeah. haven't been at one seventy, but he said he's gonna move to fifty five. And uh, I read an article of him saying that he's had a lot of trouble making fifty five, but he thinks that's his true weight division. He just hired Mike Dulce. Um, Dolce yeah, so he's gonna. But BJ Penn didn't like his uh, the way he did it when BJ Penn hired him. So really? we'll see how that works out. You know, I hope he makes way. I want to fight, but um, I don't think BJ uh, likes anything to do with diet. Period. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was gonna say something along similar lines. Um, but that could mean 
an extra boost in cardio for you. His cardio might be lacking, cutting all that weight, maybe having a bad weight cut. Not that you would rely on any of those factors, but it's just something to think about. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm definitely not worried about my cardio. Right. Um, oh. I think uh, my cardio is going to make the difference if it goes ends up going to the third. Right. So I think uh, if it goes to the third, I have a high chance of finishing the fight. And tomorrow, talking about Brazil, we have uh, Big Four Silva. Mm-hmm. Uh, taking on Lovsky that I think a lot of people thought was done at least in the UFC even though he, he kept on fighting but again hard work pays off and someone that's kept at it and believed in himself and had a few bad losses where he was knocked out unconscious and people said that's it his chin is gone and 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 it's not just a saying like your chin is gone it's, it's been proven once you've been knocked out your brain hits the inside of the skull um, and it does some damage to, to the brain and uh, it will be easy to get knocked out again but he had some real bad knockouts where he you know he was uh, unconscious both, both in the UFC and in strike force as well and in when he fought uh, Fedor in uh, mm-hmm. Affliction mm-hmm. Um, we all know Bigfoot has a big chin yeah, he, a good chin. <laughs> he has a good chin and a big chin literally and metaphorically <laughs> <laughs> who do you think will win I got a big chin too uh, I got big foot <laughs> silver yes you uh, do yeah. but not that big not, not that big uh, um, I have Bigfoot Silva on this one. I think I, I rewatched their last fight in Strike Force four years ago, and it was mostly a boxing match. Yeah. It was Bigfoot Silva staying calm, staying composed, staying in the middle of the cage, Arlovsky putting pressure on, going in, going out, going in, going out, but doing no damage, just peppering him with shots. Every time he would come in, Bigfoot would counter with some nice big shots that really rocked him. Um, I got Bigfoot on this. Uh, I got Bigfoot, you know, I'm a big Bigfoot fan since uh, the Mark Hunt fight. Yeah. You know, yeah. he's a he's a, he's a warrior, and I just know he's not going to give up, and he'll come forward, and uh, I mean, I think he's bigger than Avlosky, so. 25 pounds. Mm, that's a big difference. That's yeah. a big difference. It's the only, it's so crazy, it's the only weight class in the UFC that allows 25 pounds of difference. I mean that's insane. It it is insane. It's a little bit less of a difference just body percent body weight percentage wise. Right. Just because you know the difference between two hundred fifty and two hundred seventy five pounds is a lot less than one twenty five to one fifty for example. Very valid point. Yeah. Or one thirty five, one fifty five, which mm-hmm. is a big difference. They're both yeah, big boys. In the gym. They're big big boys, but absolutely it is a, a big difference, especially if he goes to the ground. And but like you said, big for silver, he stood and banged it out. Uh, you know, with the Mark with. Hunt. Uh, yeah, Mark Hunt, uh, Alistair Overeem mm-hmm. knocked him out, oh, yeah, and right. you know he's he's definitely very confident right now in his stand up, yeah. and and he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu and a legit black belt in jiu-jitsu. He gave Verdum a run for his money, uh, and Verdum said it after. He's like, "Wow, I was I didn't expect the jiu-jitsu to be that good." And that's a world champion right. in jiu-jitsu, and some of the, he's got probably the best jiu-jitsu in, in, in the UFC. Yeah. And uh, you know he has a very good uh, half guard, deep deep half, and uh, he does. A loss is not gonna try to take him down right and, no. and and even if he can take him down and 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 then what does that leave him with it leaves him with his kickbox and which is his background anyways now is he gonna is he gonna try to stand with big four he's gonna be in his face for five rounds right can he and uh, again how good is his chin we haven't really seen it yet right i think this is um our loss when they fought before i don't think arlovsky was training with greg jackson at the time no. He is now. Yeah. So um, there could be some differences in strategy, in technique. I don't know what uh, Greg Jackson has planned for Arlovsky, but maybe we can see something different out of the corner. Hope is not running. <laughs> <laughs> Which has been the case sometimes out of Jackson camp. And, yeah. and again, you know, I, I think Greg Jackson is amazing. I think he's very, very good at what he, he does is. and game plans and so on. But sometimes, and again, in the end of the day, it's 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 about getting the W. But right. I, I'm a fan of the sport and I want to see a good fight. And and I agree with Dana White and the fans. Sometimes sometimes it's just I get it. You want to win, but not at all costs. So sometimes it's better to lose a good fight than win a bad one. Right. Uh, and and Dana White prefers that. You know what I mean? Um, t- like like look, uh, what was his name? Dan Hardy. He lost four straight. And his fourth one was uh, against uh, Chris Lytle. Yeah. But he was so happy with his performance because he rocked uh, Chris Lytle twice in the second round. Yeah. Ended up losing the fourth fight in a row, but Dana White let him keep going because he was so impressed with his performance. 
you know, you give a good show. Yeah. You look at Diego Sanchez. and yeah. he, he loves Diego Sanchez. I don't think Perfect he's, example. He's, he's ever going to cut him. And Diego loses a lot of fights, but he <clears> gives <throat> such a good show. And in Dana White's eyes, that's a win. He wants fighters to go in there and, and fight. You know, that's, that's what you're doing. Just the ultimate fighting, you know, this is the top of the level. You got to go out there and fight. You know, you're trying to win, like, you know, at all costs. He gets boring. Like, look at uh, Askren, Ben Askren. Yeah. He's 13-0. and 0. Um Got cut by Bellator, you know what I mean? Because he's just a born fighter. He wins his fights, but he just lays on top of you and just won by TKO though. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he won his last two fights by yeah, TKO. Yeah, I guess he's realizing himself. Yeah, too. he's probably taking you know, the same. You got, you got to take risk in the sport. You know what I mean? Um, you know, it's you got to go out there at all costs and you know try to finish the fight. Don't leave it to the judges. And uh, you know, if it's a crazy war, you know, look at look at uh, uh, Forrest Griffin and Stephen Bonner, the ultimate fighter. Yep. Dana White gave him both six-figure contracts because it was such a good brawl. He said there was no loser in that fight, even though Forrest Griffin won. Yeah. So, you know, that's what it comes down to. Steve, Stephen Bonner, we talked about it last week uh -huh. in Bellator. Did you see that? I did. I did. I What's your opinion? Talk about it again. <laughs> <laughs> What's your opinion on WWE um, slash mixed martial arts? I really got upset about that. I mean, I was a big WWE fan, you know, yeah. growing up. Uh, yeah. That's actually how I started. That's like my first like sense of competition i had a trampoline i was like you know doing stuff <laughs> off my roof onto the trampoline with my brother but um uh keep in the wwf or e and uh don't bring it to mma mma is real mma is a real sport i don't we don't need that kind of uh atten Downplay. attention yeah, yeah i hate you know? it oh. so um i thought that was that was not a smart idea and Drama is something that we've seen a lot in the Ultimate Fighter, and that's <laughs> something we want to talk about. Now, I've, I've spoken not on, on camera, but we've talked about it off camera, and it's just <laughs> a house. There's enough drama over the seasons with a bunch of guys in there. A, a house full of women? Opinions? <laughs> Oh my god, before I saw the first episode, I was like, this is going to be insane. I already knew characters like Felice Herrig, yeah. uh, like uh, Rose Namajunas. I already knew some of them before the season, and I was like, these girls are going to start some drama. After seeing the first episode, uh, they kept it classy on the first episode, I think, because everyone's <laughs> new. Let me just tell you, the next couple weeks, guys, you're going to see some serious breakdown of that. Um we got Felice Harry, I know her as well. We've been out partying with her, and, uh -huh. and she absolutely. And, and that's, you know, to be a fight, you have to have something inside of you that's you know, at least, I don't want to say aggressive, I don't want to say crazy, but. You can say crazy. <laughs> you can say crazy. You can say crazy. <laughs> Everyone's yeah. a little crazy. Look at Rhonda. Come on, she's crazy. <laughs> she's crazy. <laughs> and, and Felice, and, and hilarious, and but, you know, you can see it in her eyes. Yeah. And then we got. Um, Carlos Barza, who's a great fighter out of here, and I'm really glad to see Jessica, Jessica Penny on there as well. Probably have her on the show in the future, and she's been at it for so long, and, yep. and Victor, and so forth, and the same with uh, Carlos Barza, obviously. And um, then we have uh, uh, someone that, that, that we've... Uh, you trained a Black House for, for a period of time uh -huh. as well. Justine Keish. Justine Keish. Yeah, and yeah, saw yeah, her yeah, at yeah. She's that uh, came down here a couple of times too. I used to live with me actually. And, oh, uh, and <laughs> really? I, yeah, yeah, yeah. She came out. That's where she came out to LA originally and um, oh, uh, started training in Black House. And you know, hilarious. By the way, she's she the person that you will see on there is 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 definitely her. Like she's. I'm sure you, we haven't seen it yet, but we'll see crazy yeah, out yeah, of her. Yeah. And that's just who she is. And she fights like. I don't know what demons she is in that cage with her when she fights, but you've seen her RFA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely insane. Muay Thai world champion. And, um, I had her as one of my top picks. Yeah. I kind of rated the girls uh, and I had she, her. As she my actually top. tried out for the 135 pound division ultimate fighter. Yeah, Did she we really? Were, yeah, yeah, me yeah. and her were there together. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> and it's, she's a cool chick. Um, <sighs> we uh, all went out one night in Hermosa. You know, uh, she went, came with Stephanie. She's good friends with Stephanie. From she the can gym. party. Yeah, yeah. And, um, <laughs> you know, I was training for my Chris Tickle fight and uh, Stephanie was like, like made me show her my stomach and stuff so she just kept going <laughs> oh, oh, oh like she wouldn't stop like touching my stomach all night and uh she just kept making jokes about it and like every every topic we're on she would say something about it and uh but she's funny man she had me laughing but she's she's a monster you know she's uh she is one of those girls that is so tough yeah i was watching her past fights in invicta and rfa she's tough as balls yeah. i mean oh, yeah. they all are but she she has a little something extra and uh, in her last RFA fight, you know, uh, we saw her in a first of all with a stand up, like demolishing her opponent who's yeah. on the show as well. Uh, and then 
get caught in a really deep arm but I'm like that arm is breaking and she would not let go mm -hmm. and I asked after the fire with a big smile like nah my arm is fine it was, I was good it I was wasn't good. that bad no <laughs> she's very athletic she's a smaller version and I would say that she's a smaller vers version of Chris Cyborg the way she fights okay and, I can uh, see that and at 135, that would have been hard for her because she's so much smaller. But her stand-up, I don't think any of the girls... I've seen a spa with Tiffany Van Zoyce, uh -huh. who's yeah. really, really yeah, world yeah, champion yeah. Muay Thai. And Tiffany, uh, she will take punches and she'll keep smiling and just keep coming forward. She does not mind getting hit. She likes getting hit, I think. <laughs> I'm excited to see her fight. Yeah. She won uh, the Athlete of the Night, right? RFA? RFA, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did she? Mm -hmm. uh, over like... You know, old Brian Ortega, who they, they had a war, and uh, that was a crazy fight. Yeah, yeah, Brian. but um, I think they actually got rated like fight of the year or something like that. But um, yeah, Justine won the the fight of the night bonus. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, she's definitely an athletic girl. Uh, you also have Heather Joe Clark yeah. on there. She's definitely going to be a tough contender. I think she's undefeated. She the one that trains with Misha Tate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she trains with Misha Tate. She's undefeated. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tough girl. Um, definitely one of the top contenders in the house. I think. And. Who do, would you if you'd have to pick someone? Who would you pick? Uh, number one. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I think gonna win it. My number one was Tisha Torres. For those of you that saw, she lost first. So I guess I was wrong. But <laughs> Who's your second pick? My new number one. I mean, the obvious choice to me is Carla Esparza. Um, yeah. She has just amazing, amazing, amazing wrestling. We went to the and same high school. Yeah. Yeah. Went really? To Redondo High. Was she a high school she wrestler? Rest, yeah, she wrestled Redondo. Did, did oh, you know her back crazy. then? No, I think she graduated before I, I joined the team. You so, her old? Huh? No. Her old? <laughs> no I only wrestled my senior year, <laughs> one year, which, you know, led to me taking the MVP award. But oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but still, no, not yet. She, but um, everyone, all my friends, like, knew who she was, and uh, I had friends that wrestled with her. So That's crazy. What a yeah. small world. Yeah. Where'd you go to high school? Uh, Redondo. Just Redo oh, Redondo. <laughs> 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 no, no, but actually, I went to Hawthorne first, but... Uh, she was know, at Redondo. Yeah, I was, I, I was getting into some fights and getting into some trouble. You go kicked so. out. Um, my mom put me in uh, Redondo. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle's a really sweet guy, actually. I really like yeah. her. So is she? I hope yeah. And Jessica Penn as well. And the problem is, you know, they're on the same team, and they're very, very good friends. So it'll be interesting to see how it you plays know, out. How, yeah. Are they on then. Did they get put on opposite teams? I don't know. I'll be honest. I didn't see yesterday. Yeah, I was you working. know, there's, there, there, there's some Carla and uh, Tisha beef going on right now. Right? Yeah, I, I saw a little bit on, on social media. <laughs> yeah. what, what was it exactly? Did you see um, it? I guess uh, Tisha made a post because um, people thought she was on steroids. Oh, right. And uh, she's claiming that she never drank. She never smoked. She, she said she she's never, never touched done anything. an illegal substance. Yeah, in her yeah. Life. She's like, it's not my fault that I'm uh, genetically gifted and stuff. And I guess Carla made a, on the season sometime in my C, um, a comment about her uh, being on steroids and like how you, you eat like crap and like how it still shows. Right. So, and like the fact that, you know, you went undefeated and then uh, the first fight, you fight the like ranked number 15 or 14 girl and you lose, you know, because you have to be off steroids on the show. To be on the show, right. So. Hmm. Um, so so she tagged Carla in that post, and then Carla, you know, wrote this big old thing about Tisha. And to, to be fair, Tisha posted pictures of when she was like nine or ten, and she had the same chiseled arms. Really, I don't. It it must be genetics. Oh, no, I believe her. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's there's genetically people out there um, who are just naturally ripped. Right. You know, so like and people yourself? say because no, she's American top team. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at my family, yeah, I'm not genetically I gifted. think Eleni when you watch this because I know you will I think your brother just called you fat yeah I his did. sister I'm, I'm more scared of his <laughs> no, sister I'm just kidding. I'm not <laughs> just kidding. girl power I got you girl <laughs> talk about girl power you're fighting I am oh Where? yeah I am uh, October 11th October 11th yep it's my amateur debut for Joe Stevenson's card what's it called California Victorville. California Fight Alliance it's called I think mm -hmm. yep. nice how are you feeling about it good yeah really good Yep. Are you it's, watching this, the women on the Ultimate Fight, and thinking that's gonna be me one day? I'm watching it, thinking I would have tried out had I known the tryouts were going on. Even though I'm not nearly as experienced as any of these girls, I would have loved to have done it. I think Jessica Pryor tried out. She? Oh our yeah, she, I, I was with Jessica as well, and when she, she was there when Justine tried out. Too. Yeah, yeah, one of our teammates um, tried out. Yeah, and um, it's funny because back then they said, "Oh, you don't have much. like Justine at 135." The reason why right. they wouldn't let her on the show said she said just doesn't have enough experience. She's a world champion Muay Thai in Thailand. How she is that? Not I was holding pads. I was holding pads for her when they do the stand up part in the Ultimate Fight. We I held pads for, for not even fifteen seconds. They're like, okay, you're good. 
because compared to everyone, a lot of the girls are very good grappling and they lack a lot of the stand up. Really? <laughs> but this, she didn't have enough experience. And she was 2 0 uh, my um, MMA already mm. and 2 0 professional boxing. But it is so a risk. I guess you need a lot more experience, guys. Another thing that, ha- yeah, another thing talking about experience. Nick Diaz had another experience today. Did you hear? I heard. Yeah. DUI and arrested for DUI and obstruction of a police officer. Four arrests. There's four, right? Attempt to destroy evidence. Evidence. Mm-hmm. And I just suspended license. Yes. And Dana White says the fight's still on for January. Of course. It's all about business. It's all about the money. Yeah. I, I don't blame him. I want to see that fight. Yeah. If it got canceled, I'd be upset. Yeah. But do you think it's almost like it's Nick Diaz? It's, it's just like it's Nick it, Diaz. Yeah, it's, it's expected. It <laughs> but, but look, me look, at look all. what happened with John Jones when he got a DUI. And what everyone was saying. And oh, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it seems out of character. That's true. Right? I mean, John I mean, Jones isn't really known to be this crazy guy. I right. met John Jones. He's not a crazy guy. He's very I met him, mellow. too. He's actually a really cool guy. Yeah, he's really so funny, cool. Really funny. So yeah. down to earth. Um, like, probably the most down to earth fighter I've met. Yeah, yeah. No, he's, he's smiling. He wanted to do a video with us because we uh, did a Nike commercial with him. So, um, it was really cool. He's a really nice guy. And he Nick, is really Nick cool. Diaz, and we I actually saw him at Hermosa one time, and he, he's kind of a little punk. You know what I mean? Like, he was making fun of James Acosta. He was just like like talking crap about him. I don't know. What did he say? I don't even know why. I I I didn't really see it too much. I was right. I was there. But uh, James was like kind of getting mad about it, and Rob was like, "What the heck?" You know, like, yeah, he was just being a punk. We just saw him, and like, they didn't know he he know we were fighters or anything. And then they saw Terion with the shirt, uh, and like, oh, that that's that shirt. So they took a picture with the uh, Terion, and uh, yeah, it, it was funny. I think it was after D one Dima's fights actually. That's but, um, crazy. Yeah, and but you know you see the Strike Force brawl with uh. Nibber yeah. Diaz brothers, they're known for it, so it's like, yeah, I mean, nah. that's their marketing. There point. they go again, yeah. You know what I mean, <laughs> Felice, like Felice Harrig, like we talked about earlier, I think she is the smartest businesswoman on the Ultimate Fighter. Mm-hmm. Go look at her Twitter, her Facebook, her Instagram compared to all, all the other girls, mm-hmm. she has like quadruple the followers. She says she's, that's how she makes her money, yeah. She, yeah, she, she knows smart. what she's doing, she she's knows smart, what she's doing, but it's just for even though she doesn't have the best records in mixed martial arts, yeah, she has been fighting Muay Thai for a long time and yeah. she's legit. and knows how to use her marketing value to market herself she does she has um some outfits that are very extraordinary i'd say and it sells very <laughs> well yes. and and it works and i was like you know what good for you You're doing the right thing and market yourself now yeah. talk about marketing and branding how's christos gogos gonna market and, and brand himself i see i know you love spider man how i think i know how it's gonna be like like the americanized greek boy like, he's got the whole Greek thing going on, like the Spartan. He's got the flag on his back. But then he's also, like, he's got this all-American boy at its, like, personality. Like, almost like a Chris Weidman. Yeah. I feel him going that route. Well, you know, um, my um, my brother talked to some guy in Greece, and they're saying, I'm getting a lot of Greek followers right now. Oh, that's awesome. And, you know, I don't speak Greek, and it sucks. Um, I am Americanized. Um, my family is straight out of Greece, and I end up not learning it. But, um... I have a lot of following because I'm repping a lot of the Greek things. I walk out in the Spartan cape and helmet. And um, my brother said there hasn't been a true Greek, you know, fighter since Mike's and Beatty's. Philip, Philip, Philippos. Um, he does. He think he rocks a different. Um, Philip, Costa Filippo. Yeah. Yeah, I think he rocks a different. He he claim, like he rocks a different thing. He doesn't like embrace his Greek heritage. Mm. So um. I think it's a definite path for you. Yeah, you know, and then um, I mean, if Dana White ever wants to take the UFC to. Greece, you know. It, um, it's never been to Greece? No, no, not yet. That could be uh, so cool. Yeah, I just uh, got to sort out the economy first. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, they uh, like like I said, a lot of the Greeks are uh, have a big Greek following now. And um, yeah, my brother said uh, if I you know, win a couple fights, maybe that could be something that is the future. Yeah. But that's just talking big right you, now. Uh, you know? No, but <laughs> you can never say never in the UFC. I mean, they've gone to, to countries and places we never thought they would yeah. go. Like and Sweden. And Ireland. Like Sweden. Yeah. Eight million people, yeah. Uh, Ireland. But that's Ireland, the thing. Yeah. If, you, if you have, uh, and, and that's good with, with Dana White and, and the UFC, if there's a big following and hardcore enough, diehard, right. hardcore fans uh, that follow UFC, the UFC, like Britain and, and Northern, Northern Ireland, Ireland, um, you know, they love mixed martial arts. They love fighting, period. Right. The, the Islanders from the UK and Britain, mm-hmm. uh, they love, and Scotland now is going to be independent, uh, love, because I don't want to get shot, uh, <laughs> <laughs> love love fighting. Whether it's boxing, kickboxing, mixed martial arts, and especially right. mixed martial arts, you know, they, they love fighting. 
And it's funny because we've got a Brit Sim behind the camera over in the corner going, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Rugby player. Looks just like Muhammad Ali. He <laughs> does say? look like Muhammad Ali. <laughs> I saw him outside and I was like, oh, can I get your autograph? Can we turn the camera on him real quick just so you can see him? Is that doable? <laughs> just put him on camera real quick. <laughs> tell me it doesn't look like a young Cassius Clay. Please tell me it doesn't. That's, that's a young Cassius Clay right Zoom there. Zoom in there. Yeah, there you uh, go. <laughs> a little bit. Look at that. <laughs> he wasn't camera ready he didn't have his makeup on yet um so but that's i I think that's right and what i like you know honestly from from knowing you obviously you 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 don't have to market or brand yourself in a way that you are not like chelson is a great example he's a great speaker but the chelson you see on camera versus off camera is a very different guy he's a nice guy off camera you don't have to do that because you, you can be yourself and if for nothing else, follow at C. Giagos <laughs> on Instagram yes. and you will see who Christos he, is. He is a market in himself. I think yeah. you're going to do just fine. Um, I, I was really excited when I saw that you're fighting in Brazil and I was like, I know it's going to be crazy. The crowd's going to be crazy, mm. but I like the way you're starting out. It's a, it's a big one. I think it's going to make a statement, especially mm. if you win, which you're going to. I think it's going to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'm stoked. Whoa, whoa. Cool. All right. So make sure you tune in to The Ultimate Fighter. Watch Christos Giorgos, October 25th. We were actually supposed to have Peter Munoz here today as well, a jiu jitsu coach at mm-hmm. Assistance Training Center, who um, uh, you train with a lot as well. And, and I've known Pedro for a long time now, too. Yeah. So yeah. Both of you were respecting the cage champions uh-huh. and uh, RFA champions. And RFA champions as well. About in to, the UFC. And he fought in Brazil, too. So now I'm, uh-huh. about, to, and now I'm about to go fight in Brazil. Oh, <laughs> so and, many similarities. And, and Pedro is going to fight on October 4th in Canada. In Canada. That's actually the reason why he's not here today. We'll probably have him on next week um, because he had to care of some last minute paperwork. He needs a bit done for Canada. Uh, That's acceptable, I think. Yeah, absolutely. It's a good excuse. <laughs> he was actually sending text messages with a, it was a word that begins with F and ends with Ux in there. A lot of them because <laughs> he was running late uh, and he was no way he's going to make it up here on time. But uh, your opinion on, on Pedro and, and in his UFC career? Um, Pedro Munoz is a very, very talented fighter. Um, he has every tool that it takes to be a fighter. He's not a specialist in one thing. Even though he's a, a black belt jiu-jitsu, he's a very, very good wrestler. Yeah. And he's a very, very good striker. He'll he won his last fight in the UFC on the feet, knock the guy out. Um, he'll take you down. He'll submit you. He has what it takes, honestly, to be uh, a champion. And I think he'd actually beat TJ Dillashaw, in my opinion. Um, I, I agree. I it's funny because I sparred with both of them, and and uh, really, yeah. And now again, granted, uh, I said it before, TJ that we saw against Burrell was very different from from in, in a year's time how much it developed in a year is crazy but i i agree i think i'm sure that tj is already uh, watching peter munoz just because of the level that he's uh, he's at and even though he's only two fights into his ufc career yeah i'd love to see that his first fight he had a fight rafael asensio who beat tj dillashaw and um you know it was pedro's first fight you got to imagine there's one taking a fight show notice two being in the ufc and three facing number three in the world there has to be a lot of, you know, going on in that fight, that fight mentally. Definitely. So uh, I would love to see rematch. I'm pretty. Uh, Pedro actually injured him. Um, yeah, he's out for six months. Broke yeah, his ribs. Yeah, with those toe kicks. Asensio is a true warrior. Yeah. So. Um, and, but, uh, and and knowing Pedro as well, you know, Pedro's usually a very calm and very uh, a good, um, very smart fighter inside the cage, and mm-hmm. and I I feel like he didn't fight the way he would normally do. He was almost like he was trying, like showing his toughness, like you said mm-hmm. before, is like showing that I belong in the UFC, and I'll stand with this guy for three rounds. Right, he right. could have potentially fought a smarter fight, uh, and and maybe won it, but he wanted to show that. And again, you know, when I'm like I said, number three in the world, guy right. is very very big for 135. Yeah, and uh, with a short notice, and he stood with him and, and hurt him, and that was it was it was a close fight. A good fight's a good fight, like yeah. we were talking about earlier. Dana White likes good fights, good fighters. I don't think. Uh, not getting the W in that one was that big of a deal for Pedro Munoz. He'll be back Agreed. super strong. Oh, he already did. Came out when he got a first round TKO. Yep. Yeah. So, and this Brazil. is the third one. Yeah. In Brazil. Going back to Sao Paulo and where he's from. Uh, but October 4th, Pedro Munoz. October 25th in Brazil. Um, we, we have Christos Giorgos. Thank you for coming in. No and problem. then. Thanks for having me. October 11th. On October 11th. Yep. And uh, we'll see you here again next week. Bye-bye.